Hello and happy, happy Tuesday. I think I'm a couple of minutes late today, but I'm so glad that you're joining me today for a little bit of crafty, crafty, crafty fun at my studio today. So I'm Wendy Lee from creativelyyours.com and I'm an independent stamp up demonstrator in the US. Yay, 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 yay. Just in case I forgot to say that. Um, I have some fun things for you today. Lots of stuff to share. Um, let's see. Couple reminders. The last chance list is going on now for that. So that's for the 20, I always say this wrong, 2021, 2022 annual catalog. So there are some really good deals. Um, they're discounted. So be sure to check those out. Um, things are selling pretty darn quickly, but there are still a lot of great things to be had. And I'm going to share at least one of the cool tools today that is super discounted. Um, I also have, this is the last week to take advantage of my awesome April deal. Yep. And on the 30th, which is Saturday. So for those of you that don't know, that's when you spend $25 with me before shipping and tax, place your online order, send me your order. I'll help you place it. Call me, whatever we want to do. We can text, we can do whatever we need to do. We'll get your goodies ordered for you. And then you get to choose for every $25 you spend, you get to choose a free item from my retired stash. Lots of goodies there still. They're going fast as well, but um, there's still plenty to choose from. Let's see, I'm mailing out new catalogs now. So if you haven't sent me an email to let me know um, that you want one and to confirm your address, you can still do that. Um, but they've been mailed out uh, for those that have let me know already. So they're on their way to you. Uh, and I have registration open for so many things right now. I've got my Let's Set Sale class that you've been seeing behind me the last couple of weeks. Um, that registration is up and going as of today, and I'll have a sneak peek at the end of today's project to show you what those look like, so you can see them a little closer up. And then uh, registration is open for my next online bingo that is happening in June. Yes, June. And uh, there's a sneak peek of those cards right behind my head here. We're using the... Um, the Kite, Kite Delight stamp set. It's beautiful, so much fun. And then registration's open for my In Color Club. So if you love the fabulous new In Colors, they're bright, they're cheerful, so much fun. I will share more about that in the coming week or so. Um, but the In Color Club registration is open as well. It helps you get um, all of the In Color products a little bit at a time, so it's spread out over five months. And then you get little gifties along the way from me. So that's fun. And then product shares. Oh my gosh, who doesn't love designer shares paper and new ribbons? Me, 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 me. I love them. So uh, product shares registration is going on now as well. And these things end soon. A lot of these things end soon. So be sure to check that out. You can find everything on my classes and events tab of my website, creativelyyours.com. Or if you're on my email list, subscribe to my email list. There'll be a link after this video um, in the updates there. So you can join my email list. And I send out emails to make sure everybody on my list knows what's happening and going on and can subscribe. All right, let's get down to the crafty fun and get started. Switch the camera over. All right, today we are going to do a cool double pocket gift card holder. So this month in our team meeting, so I call my team the Diamonds, and uh, in our Diamonds team meeting, we um, we have a swap each month, and uh, they're themed, and my swap guru is Jennifer Hamlin on the team, so she organizes that, and this month was gift card holders, and she shared a layout that was actually created by Kay Kaplow. And I loved it. So I created it for my swap. Um, and it's funny because I've got a couple other alternates to show you as well. So I actually created a stack of these gift card holders. I'll show you a little bit more in a moment. And I use the Hey Sports Fan Designer Series Paper Pack, which is in the mini catalog. So that's part of the whole Hey Sports Fan suite that's in the catalog. So we've got a great stamp set with some cool dies embellishments, twine, and this designer paper. Now for my projects today, I chose to pull in a different stamp set. So I've used the designer paper and the twine from this uh, suite, but I wanted you to see it because it's really, for your sports enthusiast, it's a great, um, great suite to have on hand. And this paper is great. 
Um, so I've, I've done, here's three of the designs. I had several because I did one in each of the different prints. So, um, but I wanted you to see here. And then this pulls out. And this is where your gift card would, you glue it right on there. And then this side pulls out and you've got a place to write a little note. You could use the back if you want to, but just so fun, right? You could tuck some other things in there if you want to. Um, sorry, my hands are, my arthritis is bugging me a little bit today. So I'm, I'm struggling a little bit, um, sliding things in and out. So we've got those, those fun, you know, and just mix and matching where the evergreen, evening evergreen, night and navy, poppy parade, um, cardstock spell, right? Yay. All right. So I am going to show you guys how to create this one. Let's say hello to everybody. So who do I have with me? Hey, Kay and Donna and Susan. So glad you guys are here today. Ready for some crafty fun, I hope. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Let's pull in. I'm going to use my Simply Scored. I like to use this when I have um, multiple score lines. I just find it a little bit easier. I'm walking across the room in case my voice is going in and out. I apologize for that. I realized I did not pull the dies that I wanted to show you that I used on this project. And scary, sadly, however you want to look at it, I have them buried on the other side of the room. I also realized I never pulled my stamp set. Kind of hard to stamp that sentiment without the stamp set. So I'm grabbing that as well and a block. And uh, I'm going to grab some ink. I'm just going to pick one of the three colors and, and we're going to make it work. And hopefully I pick like the block that's big enough for my sentiment. If not, I'll run across the room again. All right. So let's start by scoring our designer paper. Hey, Janet, so glad you're here. All right. So I'm butting this up in the corner of my Simply Score. Now you can use a paper trimmer if you prefer. Um, I just like using the scoreboard when there's multiple score lines, especially if I'm making many of these, because then I can put my paper out um, and just do them one after another really, really quickly. So it's a little bit faster. Now, the complete supply list, along with the cut dimensions, I'll add into the video afterwards. So if you guys have, aren't sure how to see that, when you go back to look later, if you, you have to expand it. I think you have to hit see more. Um, or more, I'm not exactly sure what it says, but you've got to expand it and then you'll have to scroll down because um, I have lots of things that I share in there with you, but there's links. So if you need any products, you can click right on the link. It adds it into your cart. Um, you could use the products you have on hand and then you've got all your cut dimensions to recreate this. All right, so I've got my strip of designer series paper. I'm going to score it at one and three quarters, four and three quarters, and seven and three quarters. And hopefully I did that right. Now, Previously, Susan had asked which end of this um, little scoring tool do I use. I use the larger ball when I'm dealing with designer paper. Um, and then you need a lighter hand it's because you don't want to push so hard that it cuts through the paper. And it's a little bit easy to do until you get the hang of it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and fold along these score lines. So this is great because it lets me kind of make sure I'm straight. On the back side of this, really cool the navy wood grain pattern, I like that. So I'm just gonna fan fold back and forth. You can call it Mountain Valley, whichever makes you happy, right? And the good thing is, is if my scoring was a little bit crooked, I can, this is my time to fix it, right? So I can kind of adjust this a little bit and get that a little straighter. So this is what you're doing. So let me open it up. So you got Valley, Mountain, Valley, or if you turn it this way, <laughs> whichever way. you got an M or a W, whichever way you want to look at it. Cool. So I found that depending on which side of the paper you want showing like to this side, that's what you want facing up when you do this. And some papers you have to be careful because they might be directional. I love that they didn't make this one directional. I've got some things turn one direction, some things turn another. That's actually what I prefer to see. I, um, I actually don't like it when it's directional. It, it makes it a little more difficult because I got to think harder, right? Who wants to think? Ah, Susan, my paper. I'll put that in afterwards, but let's see. I've, I've got a cheat note. That is 11 and three quarters by five and a quarter. All right, yes? All right, good, 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 good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and make my pockets first. Now on, my, on most of my samples, I just use stamp and seal. But if you want to make sure that you've got um, the most room 
you know, this is pretty wide open and I've got plenty of space to just use stamp and seal on this. But if you are worried about that, you can use a really skinny liquid glue, okay? So I'll go ahead and do that just because it might be a little bit easier to see on the video as well. Although you guys know liquid glue is not always my favorite. So I'm gonna glue this panel to the back panel. I'm gonna do that first. And so I'm just gonna put the liquid glue at this top and bottom edge, okay? And I'm gonna fold that close and give that a good push. All right, now this panel here can glue totally closed. So I'm just gonna pull out my stamp and seal for that one. Because I prefer stamp and seal. It's funny, we had our Maker's Mojo this past weekend and thank you everyone that joined us. I hope you guys had a good time. It was a lot of fun from our perspective. So um, I hope that everybody had a good time, but um, yay, Faith, good. I'm glad you caught me live as well. Hey Gwen, glad you're here. Um, but yeah, we had a really good time and I found that I'm kind of in the minority of that particular group of demonstrators that I prefer seal, stamp and seal over the liquid glue where so many people prefer the liquid glue. It's funny how it's so personal. All right, so we've got those two panels. We've got a pocket that we've created here with our little skinny strip of glue. We've glued this panel down. Now I've got this loose. This is gonna create another pocket. So I wanna glue the top and bottom edge. Again, really close to the edge if you can get it close to the edge so you can leave as much open as possible. I'm gonna push that down and let that sit. Okay. So I'm gonna let that sit for a moment before I do, um, I wanna run my bone folder in there to kind of open those pockets up a little bit, but I'm, I really want that liquid glue to sit a little bit and it's gonna stay wet for a moment. So while I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna bring in my Poppy Parade. And again, you know, like I said on these, I changed the color up depending on which print I grabbed out of the paper, um, cause I thought that was kind of fun. So this is um, four and a quarter by five and a half. So your standard card base size but just one piece instead of folded. Now, if you wanted to make this a folded, you know, card base like you normally do, that's fine. But for the gift card holder, I felt like the pockets were plenty and you didn't really need it. Now, I didn't on my samples put anything on the back. I left them blank, but you could add something to the back if this card wasn't enough for what you were looking for, right? Okay, so we've got that together. Again, I'm gonna let that sit and dry. I'm gonna go ahead and make my uh, little pocket pieces and then we'll, We'll mess with that a little bit more. Okay, so I've got my very vanilla piece, and then I've got this uh, layer of cardstock that I'm gonna put on this edge here. I cut it one inch wide. It's a little bit wide, wider than what you need, but um, I like this because it gives me a nice sturdy edge to pull on. So let's pull out our stamp set. This is the Hello Beautiful, which is what I chose to bring in instead of the sports the sports one. So I'm using this calls for a celebration. I love this stamp set. Um, it's got some fun images in it and we'll just put it right on our block. Okay. And then I'm going to use navy ink. I could have used any of the coordinating colors. So when I list, list the supplies, you'll see all the cardstock colors that I use for the variations of samples. So you're gonna see the Poppy Parade, the Evening Evergreen, the Night of Navy, all listed. Now you could bring in Bumblebee as well. I did not, but you totally could bring that in um, because it is another great coordinating color. Whoa, got crazy here. And then I've also listed the various ink colors that I used, which were the Evening Evergreen, Poppy Parade, and Night of Navy. So again, you could bring in the Bumblebee as well. Um, that's on the last chance list. So I don't, I didn't look to see if that's sold out yet or not. I don't think it is. Um, so yeah, Janet, you prefer the seal over the glue too? Yeah, I just, um, I don't like being sticky. So, um, you know, it makes me nuts. All right. So I'm going to put adhesive on the edge there and then I'm going to put adhesive on the edge of this one. The reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to go too far over and then have glue stick out but I wanna make sure both edges are caught really well since I'm gonna slide this in and out of a pocket. So I'm just gonna lay this down and obviously I did not do a good job of getting that straight. If you, this is a really good time to pull out your grid paper. So if you use our grid paper or any grid paper really, um, this is a great time to lay that down and you can line this up nice and straight with your layers, but I didn't do it. I just, you know, just a little edge peeking out. I think that's nice. So this will slide right into my pocket. So let's see if my glue is dry enough, I'm gonna slide my bone folder into this pocket. 
and I'm going to kind of give this a little bit of a lift. Okay, so that'll make it a little bit easier for me to slide right into that pocket. Make sense? Cute? Super fast and easy. Okay. All right. Oh, good. You loved Maker's Mojo? Yeah, it was really, really good. Yeah, you said 30 years of using liquid glue with five, six, and seven-year-olds. You've had enough. Yeah. Yeah, I totally get it. I Yeah, I don't want to use liquid glue if I don't have to, but there's times you have to use it, and you see me pull it out, I will use it, but I... Yeah, I'm a mess with it. I think it's just, I just don't have the skill set, right? All right, so now I've got an evening evergreen card, and this is what's going to slide into my other pocket. And this is perfect to add a gift card to. So let me grab one real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. So you could adhere your gift card right to the front of this and slide that right into the pocket, right? So this is where the, the twine comes into play because it helps it since this is right up to the edge, it butts right up to the edge of the outer card, the twine helps give you something to grab onto. Now I've used the uh, trio punch to do this. This is on the last chance list. So this guy is normally $20. It is on sale for $12. So if you don't have a good hole punch or corner rounder, this one has it in it. And then there's this cute decorative edge as well, um, which is to me just a bonus. But if you don't have a corner rounder that you love, and a hole punch that you love, um, this might be a good one to add to your list. Now, what I'm gonna do, you can do with any handheld punch. You just need a hole to put your ribbon through. So I'm gonna put this straight in. So you've got these guides on the punch and they actually are set up so that you could put a corner in, right? So you could slide this into the corner. Oh, that one's more straight, but you, you can kind of see on the back. So, you, so this one's very much a corner, right? To punch that corner. Same thing with the corner rounder. This one's got a little more of a straighter edge. So I'm butting it up to that cha channel, right? And I'm just gonna decide where I want my hole and I'll push down and it gives me a nice hole from the edge there. So it's super easy to use, especially if you've got some arthritis like I've got. So that's the trio punch. Okay, now I wanna take a little bit of the baker's twine. So um, I've used all the navy, so I don't have a navy left, but I've got the poppy, and white, and then I've got the evening evergreen. Now, the samples I ended up with, I had samples with both, but uh, the sam all the samples I ended up with had the uh, poppy. So I pulled both out, but you know what? I'm wondering if I would like the poppy better. I think I'm gonna like the poppy better on this particular project versus the green, because it's too matchy-matchy. What do you guys think? Which one do you prefer me to do? I'll give you a moment, and then, because with the delay, it takes a bit for comments to come, for me to see comments. You guys might be able to see them, but I don't see them. Do you have a preference? Poppy? Yeah, everybody says Poppy is what I'm seeing. Okay, I'm gonna do Poppy. There may be more coming through that I haven't seen yet, but I was thinking the Poppy as well. It just seemed to make sense. Um, now, I did about two lengths, nine inches or so long. I'm just going to eyeball this. I'm not going to measure anything. I know. I should. So I'm going to just pull off my guess of two lengths. So what I mean by that is there's two pieces stacked on top of each other, and they're approximately nine, ten inches long. A lot of times I leave it on the spool, but I wanted to make sure that it made sense to you guys when I was doing this. So... I'm just going to string both pieces together through this hole. So another good thing about this punch is that it's a nice big hole for you to string your ribbons through. And I'm just going to tie this on. Yeah, it looks about even. Make my two loops. You know, I, got, I like to tie it like that. Let's see if I can get a little closer to the camera so you guys can see me. Is the light okay? I did something different with my light today, and I'm wondering if it's too shadowy. So you guys want to let me know if you can see okay or if you or you feel like it's a little too dark. It's easier for me to see, but I'm it's more important for you to see than me, right? Okay, so here's my little twine end here. Now you could cut all this off or you could leave it on. You could tie your bow a little bit bigger if you wanted to. It's up to you. I just it's it's so light. It's easy. So you put your gift card on and then let's go ahead and take our bone folder on this side as well. Open up that pocket and let's just make that a little looser. Hopefully my glue is dry. And then you just slide your card with your little gift on it, be it money, be it um, 
your gift card right on there. Cute, right? Super easy, super, super easy. All right, so now you just add some decoration. So what I did, and this is what I wanted to grab for you. So this is one of our new die sets that's coming in the, uh, I'm missing one. It's buried on my table, I can tell you, because I'm working on design right now, but I'm missing a banner. Um, so this is the stylus shapes. Yes, stylus shapes. So you know how I was so sad about the stitch shapes dies going away because I love that stitch detail. Oh, yay, 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 yay. So I've got my circles and I love that they've gone a little bit smaller. So I got a smaller circle that I didn't have before. I love that. So yeah, these, you will see me use these a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Okay, so I die cut a circle from the second largest circle from these dies. And I'm gonna use that on the front here just to give it a little bit of pop of color. And then I already fussy cut this. I didn't mean to do this ahead of time, but I guess I just got a little excited. So these are cut right out of the designer paper. So there's one of the prints just has big banners all over it. Actually, it's this print here, has big banners all over it. And I just fussy cut it right out of that designer paper. Super easy, super, super easy, all right? So we are gonna put this on the card front. So of course, I wanna watch that I don't put adhesive on the part that's hanging off this edge, right? Now you don't have to have it, you could move it over, but I like it hanging off the edge. I just need to make sure I don't put any adhesive there. So I'm gonna put this on with dimensionals. So let me flip that over, grab some dimensionals. Good, okay, the light is looking all right to you. All right, good. It's a little easier because the way I was doing my light, it, I kept knocking the thing over um, and it was a little bit blinding for me, made it a little more difficult to see. So I thought I'd try something different today, but it, it's feeling a little shadowy on my end, so I wanted to ask. All right, so I'm gonna plop this right down on the front, gives it a little height, right? And then we can add this on as well. So let's add some dimensionals. You could glue it flat. You don't have to dimensional it up. But why not, right? <laughs> now this will fit into a standard size envelope, so no worries there. As long as you keep all your stuff that, that's hanging off the outside, you keep it inside that parameter, right? And what I mean by that is inside this edge. This, this twine is so lightweight that this will add a little bit of bulk, but you can like push that that way and send that in. And so if you use a chunkier ribbon, um, you know, you'll still be okay. You just gotta watch that, right? Don't get too crazy um, with how chunky the ribbon is over here. So, unless you're gonna hand it to them, right? Great. Now, could we have added some bling a bling? Sure, we totally could have. I didn't, I left it simple. You know, guys don't really care if they have some bling on their projects. Well, maybe they do, I don't know. I've made a judgment that I didn't ask first, right? So here's just four, four options with four of the prints, but I did one in every print that was in this pack. Like I said, our meeting was last night, so I already gave them away. So sorry, I didn't have all of them to show you. I've got pictures, it'll be posted on my blog tomorrow and you'll be able to see all of the different pictures of the samples. Yes, do you guys like it? You're gonna give it a try? I hope. I've got a couple versions, right? So like I said, we had our team meeting last night and we do our swap and, um, Somebody else, Jennifer Hamlin, did the same card layout um, because this was one of the samples she showed as, a, as an inspiration. So, um, you know, I loved it. She loved it. So she's got her little pocket here for the gift card and then her little uh, insert here. And she chose not to stamp on her. She stamped here, um, which is fine. She left the whole thing open um, so you can do what you want with it. But it's so cute, right? And you can do anything with this. So that would be a good one. Um, so happy for you. Maybe that would be a congratulations. This could be a wedding, really. Um, I think you could do birthdays, mom's day, dad's day, changing up that paper. All right, and then let me show you one more. So this one is one that we're gonna make in this month's card club. So I do a forget me not is what I call it. And it's my, um, my main card class that I do every month, it's uh, a little more advanced. So there's lots of fun folds and techniques and that kind of thing. Lots and lots of fun folds because I'm a fun fold kind of gal. So this is one of the projects we're going to make there in this month's class, right? Cute. So you got your place for your gift card, just like we did. Um, if I can slide that in, right? 
And then our card insert where I have uh, also stamped in there. And this designer paper, looks like I need to pull my bone folder out and put that in there so this slides in a little bit easier. Um, this features um, the designer paper from the He's the Man suite. So this is a new product suite coming our way, um, which this paper will be included in the uh, paper share if you're interested in that. So cool. So yeah, and some new embellishments. So this will be a fun one that we're doing in this month's card club. All right, yay. All right, let me show you a sneak peek of my Let's Set Sale class that just posted today. So this is the one I've had behind me for the past um, few weeks when I've been coming on live. So this is a fun fold. This is a pillar card. So it does fold flat to either direction you put it. Um, and it's just a great card. You can set it up on display. You've got your backside to be able to um, um, write your note to that kind of fun thing. So you've got that one and then this one. Cute. So I'm featuring that New Horizons Designer Series paper, which um, that is the product suite that we are featuring in the All-Star Tutorial Bundle this month. So if you want to get your hands on that awesome tutorial bundle, you can do that by purchasing $50 with me before shipping and tax, $50, and you get that tutorial bundle for free, or you can uh, purchase it for $15. That's entirely up to you. Here's another one. Now, this is silly, I know. I, I, I punched out one of the sails, right? And I was like, oh, that looks like a shark fin. And I couldn't help myself. So we've got a shark card too. <laughs> so that's a sneak peek of those. All right, I'm gonna bring back in today's project so you can see them again. Hopefully you guys will give this, card, this gift card holder a try. Lots of fun, super easy. And the designer paper makes it just so fast and easy. You could do it with regular cardstock as well but um, it might be a little bulkier, um, but I do, I do love it with designer paper. It makes it so easy. All right, if you've got questions, make sure you leave me comments. I will go back and look and make sure I didn't miss any. Thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate it. I appreciate you sharing it with your crafty friends. That gets my name out there a little bit more. Um, and if you're watching um, the replay on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, all right? Thank you guys. Uh, tomorrow on my blog, this project will post, and I don't know if you guys know that I do this, but I always provide a printable recipe um, for the live projects. So I know that you get the supply list and uh, cut dimensions in the heading of the video, but if you want something that you can print off that's got the photo on it, I have been doing that for a few weeks now, uh, a few months now, maybe. I don't know how long, for a while. <laughs> so you've got a printable recipe if you want to grab that. So that'll post tomorrow. All right. Thank you guys so much. And I am looking forward to seeing you again next Tuesday. Is it next week that the new catalog starts? Let me flip my calendar. I think it is. Oh, yes. The new catalog starts next Tuesday. Ooh, yay. So we have lots of new stuff starting next Tuesday. All right. Can't wait to see you. All right. Bye for now and have a wonderful, wonderful week.